Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Harley and I'm coming back at you with another video. This time we're gonna actually use Hashcat again like we did in the last one, but we're gonna use it to create a custom word list. So we're not actually gonna go through the process of cracking any passwords. I already showed you how to do some of that previously, uh, but we do wanna create our own word list so we don't have to rely on other ones that are out there public where you know maybe we're in an environment and people are using more secure passwords. Well, let's see if we can still get in. So whenever I can, I always like to try to make a blog post when I learn about something. That way I can just, it's like a public place to put my notes and I can refer to them again myself later. Uh, but one of the benefits of that is they're public. They're out there, everybody can use them. And that, that's what happened here. Um, I was doing some things with Hashcat and then in November I decided, okay, well I might as well document what I'm doing. So you don't have to go to this by any means, but it does have some of the syntax for the commands I'm gonna run. So if you're the type of person that likes to just copy and paste, or if you wanted to like bookmark this page so that way the next time you're on an engagement where you might need to use something like this, um, then you'll have it and it'll be ready for you. I'll throw the link in the description in case you're interested. But basically all that we're gonna be doing today is we're going to start by creating a really, really dumb basic word list, but then we're gonna leverage Hashcat and Hashcat rules to actually like modify that word list and turn our 20 words into thousands of, of different password combinations that could be used. So this is a great thing to do maybe after you've already breached a network, you've already dumped some hashes and rock you and some of those other word lists haven't worked for you. You might be able to make a custom word list kind of targeted for your customer. Um, now again, this content is always intended to be consumed by penetration testers, red teamers, or cybersecurity analysts, infosec teams, sysadmins. If you want to audit your own infrastructure, or if you're trying to keep your customer, your place of employment safe, uh, the, then the, this is what that content is intended for. But if we were to go ahead and just come in and we'll say like vwords.txt, we'll just start typing some words out. Like uh, it's a joke in the community, you'll hear it all the time but summer 2020, 2021, spring 2020, like things like that, we still see to this day, <laughs> like I'm not kidding. Uh, so we'll throw summer, we'll throw spring, fall, winter. All right, we get some of those really generic stupid words, maybe get password, maybe get welcome, right? These are things that most people, most organizations, someone in that organization is probably using something dumb like this. Or, you know, it's not just lowercase summer, but it's like summer one, explanation point, things like that, right? Um, okay, so we've got some of the most really stupid common ones out of the way, but now we can start targeting sp particular people. So if you've seen my environment before, my lab environment, um, it's NBA themed. So I'm going to create this list as if I'm targeting my customer and their domain name is nba.local. So knowing that, I might do NBA, I might do basketball, I might do LeBron, right? Like I might do words that are related to the industry that my client is in um, and definitely, definitely, definitely the company name. <laughs> like that works majority of the time. So if this, you know, if the entire domain was NBA, uh, but say the customer was the Lakers or, you know, Portland or blazers, right, whatever it is, you, then definitely add that as a word inside the list. So we've got some words here. I think this is good. So we'll go ahead and write and quit these changes into this words.txt file. So we've got that. Okay, so we've got our list of words, but now I wanna actually go through each one of them in a pin like 2020 or 2021, because it's really common for end users to put that at, at, as their number, because they have to meet a number requirement. So a lot of times they'll add something like that. And so we could probably do a Hashcat rule as well to achieve this, but I wanna show you guys as many techniques as possible in this video. So I'm gonna do this using a simple for loop. So if we were to do for i in, and then whatever command we wanna to run to open the contents of this file. So in this case, it would be cat words.txt. Um, so what we're saying here is for each line inside of words.txt, 
go ahead and do something. And I always like to start by just saying, show me the value for i, so echo it back out to the screen, and then done, press enter. And this is why I like doing that, because hey, it's saying, hey, no such file or directory is found. So I'm, I'm testing this out before I go too far, and this is because I'm in the wrong directory. So if I back out, I'll go into hashcat here, and then I'll run this again. There we go, cool. So now that I'm in the right directory, things are working okay. And that for loop is just a really long, fancy way to say cat words that text. <laughs> but now what I want to do is instead of just echoing that out, I also want to go ahead and say echo and we'll have to throw dollar sign I like that. We'll say echo I um, and then we'll say 2020 to try to pin that at the end make sure that works and now we've got summer but we've also got summer 2020 and then spring spring 2020 and if you don't throw it into the brackets like this it ends up breaking like it, it ends up doing that so that's why you need the brackets in order for it to work correctly and then we'll do one more we'll say echo same thing as last time except this time we'll say 2021 cool now, obviously, we can go crazy and we can start doing all kinds of extra, you know, appending all kinds of extra things here. I can do it with explanation points, at signs, all that, all that type of stuff. But um, I want to show you how to do all that using Hashcat rules instead. So this is pretty good, though. So we'll go ahead and output this into, I don't know, words text. And now we've already got a file that's grown in size quite a bit, 89 bytes versus 363. Next, let's go ahead and play with some Hashcat rules and let's see what we can turn this into. So let's go look around, see if we can find these Hashcat rules. I think if we just do uh, user shares at Hashcat, maybe? Yes, we do have a Hashcat directory. I think inside of there, we've got a rules directory. If we go ahead and list this out, you can see we've got all kinds of rules in here that we can play with. Um, so. You can use whichever ones you like. My go-to typically is to start with best 64. I also like to apply toggles five. I think that that's a, a pretty good one. So we'll go in and use best 64. We'll also use toggles five and I'll show you what that means. So basically now we'll open up Hashcat and we're gonna go in and just say dash dash force. So that way I can make sure that it goes through and is able to actually run this without throwing a ton of errors because I'm in a VM. Um, but now we just need to go in and specify what it is that we're doing. And actually, if you look, you can see from the last time I ran this, this is the same syntax that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna use words to dot text, and then I'm gonna say dash R so I can specify a rule. And we can give it the full path to the rule, which was user share hashcat rules and then pick whatever rule that we want to use. So I like to use best 64. And let's just go ahead and do that. We'll do std out to show us standard output. And we can actually see the results of all this, hit the screen. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter so we can see what this looks like. So it ran through it pretty quick because, to be honest, our list isn't that large. Um, but if I were to pipe this into less, we can see this is the type of stuff that it does. So it does some mangling. Um, it does some rearranging. This is all using that word summer, and it created a ton of different possible combinations for us. Looks like it also tried summer 2020 in all caps. It played a little bit with the caps, but not a whole lot. It added all kinds of different numbers to the end of it. Looks like it even added maybe a couple letters. So it does all sorts of different, like, weird mangling type combinations, but it doesn't do a whole lot with, with caps. And that's why I like to also combine this with a second rule, which is that toggles five. So we run this again. Let's just go ahead and say dash R, specify another rule, user share hashcat rules. And this time I'll do toggles, might have a capital T. Let's clear everything out here. What do we got? So we've got toggles five is the one that I like to run. So we'll go ahead and just use that guy. And again, STD out so we can take a look at it. Now this one's gonna take a little bit longer to run and you can see it's doing much more. So we can see it goes through and basically toggles every single letter and tries to give us many, many, many combinations uh, for all of these words. So we'll run that 
I'll pipe this into sort unique uh, or dash u. So that way it'll uniquely sort this in alphabetical order, get rid of any duplicates that might occur from combining the tool rules together. And then I'm just gonna dump this out into, I don't know, we'll actually call this like password list.txt. So that'll take a sec to run. It shouldn't be too long because we really don't have that many words. But if this keeps running, I'll pause, uh, I'll pause the video here and I'll catch you guys in just a sec. Okay, so it's been a second and now this is finished up. So now if we were to list the contents here, we see we started with words at 89 bytes, that grew to 363, but now check it out. After we actually ran it through, we're we're much we're much larger than we were when we begun. And if we were to go ahead and just less out password list, we could start kind of viewing the contents. Look at that, that's crazy. That doesn't look anything like what we started with. Uh, but you also got to remember, we told it to sort uniquely, so it's showing us all of the number combinations first, and that's why we're seeing this. But if we go further enough down, eventually we'll start to see, okay, it, it's not just numbers, <laughs> it, or at least it doesn't just start with numbers. Uh, eventually we'll see it should start with, like, basketball or whatever, whatever the first uh, word is in alphabetical order. But yeah, I mean, look at look at all these possible combinations. So if we were to go ahead and say someone in the environment is using a password like password123, we can grep password123, and it's in the list. Okay, cool, great. What if we wanted to see what combinations of passwords someone could possibly be using? Any combination like this, if they're using the word password in any way like this, we're going to find it. So that's pretty cool. It doesn't look like there's any symbols here, and that's kind of unfortunate. So we may need to find another rule that'll add symbols, or maybe we'll do another for loop and we could add the symbols ourselves. Or maybe, maybe we could even look into doing a hashcat uh, rule based, or sorry, a hashcat masking attack, where not only are we giving it, you know, a word list that we use. But we also specify to add, I don't know, maybe a symbol to the end of each possible word that we provide. If you want to see that video, let me know in the comments down below. I might make that. If you guys kind of like this, you know, in-depth type hashcat type video, um, happy to keep going further into depth here. Or we can pivot and start looking into other things. So anyway, this is pretty much all I wanted to cover today in this video. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new. I'll see you guys in the next one.